attacking the brother of the Manchester Arena bomber has refused to leave his cell for a cis sentencing. Hashim Abidi was convicted of murdering 22 people in the, in the 2017 Manchester terror attack in March. The Old Bailey heard the 23-year-old helped his brother to plan the sudden and lethal blast in which hundreds of people were also injured. A two-day sentencing hearing is underway, but Abidi has refused to enter the courtroom. So what happens from here? Let's speak with Chris Dore, criminal barrister and author of Justice on Trial. Afternoon to you, Chris. Um, it's a tricky one, this, isn't it? Uh, I understand a prisoner does have the right not to attend court if they so wish. That's correct. It won't affect uh, the judge's powers to sentence him, though, which I guess is the most important thing. He, he will be sentenced in his absence by the judge to detention at Her Majesty's pleasure, uh, uh, for uh, which is the equivalent of a life sentence for a young offender under 21. Uh, and uh, he will receive a very, very, very long uh, minimum term. In terms of th this business of refusing to attend a courtroom, I mean, does a does a prisoner have to sign a waiver? Do they have to, if they just sit there and don't sign anything, does that affect the process that is underway at the moment? Because this sentencing they isn't... don't have to sign a waiver. Uh, many cases over the years, or say many, a few cases over the years that I've dealt with personally, the client has disappeared, has absconded before sentence. I had one client who disappeared for five years and was in were eventually arrested in India five years later. And, and if someone chooses not to be present for their sentence hearing, for whatever reason, the judge just gets on with it and sentences yeah. them and the sentence takes effect as if they were sitting in the courtroom. Does it have an effect on the... I mean, this is a sentencing hearing, and that's, a, I, I assume, just a, um, a, a, a legal way of describing that it, it concludes with the sentencing, but these are all the kind of arguments surrounding it before the, the numbers are read out from the judge, as it were. So the sentence hearing is really quite straightforward and most people are probably familiar with it from TV dramas or they don't always get it right. But basically the prosecution outlines the prosecution case, although there's been a trial here. So the judge will be well familiar with the with the facts of the case. Uh, there are these the opportunity for victims to give their victim impact statements, which I know has been happening in this case. And once the prosecution and the victim impact statements have been considered, uh, then the defense uh, QC has the opportunity to present mitigation on behalf of the defendant, if so instructed, and of course, I don't know whether the uh, whether the defence, the defendant in this case, has given instructions as to mitigation. But in a case of murder, the sentence is fixed by law, uh, which is detention uh, effectively for life, which means that the defendant will never be released unless they get parole. Um, the question for the judge is to set a minimum term, a minimum term before the defendant can be considered for parole. Uh, now, in the case of an adult uh, offender uh, who's convicted of murder, the judge has the power to set what's called a whole life tariff. In other words, that they will never be released. But for someone who isn't, uh, is under 21, that power doesn't exist. So the judge will have to set a number of years as the minimum term. And I predict, predict, predict that that will be very, very many years indeed. I'm not going to, to do, well, pick a figure out of thin air because the judge will decide. Uh, but this young man will be will be well into middle age at the earliest okay. before he will even be considered for parole. So this is the territory we were in a couple of weeks ago with the murderers of or the killers of P.C. Harper. Uh, same same issue in law, Chris. It's the twenty one rule. But so you get uh, that's a different issue. That was that was because they were convicted of manslaughter, if you remember. Okay, and so that was a very different issue. Uh, this is this here. The sentence must be life in this case. It has to be. There is no option. Uh, and the judge, therefore, only has to decide the minimum term. Uh, but you're right. There is a difference uh, for young offenders, which is that the whole life tariff is not available. You can't sentence a teenager yeah. to detention for the rest of their natural life. But you can still put a minimum sentence on that. It, it, you have to. The judge has to. So the judge has to do that. And would yeah. that... So age wouldn't be a barrier in terms of what the minimum was? It affects the starting point. So for, for a, 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 per, a young offender like this, the starting point for a single count of murder, and here, of course, there are 22 counts of murder, but a single count, the starting point for a young offender, offender is a minimum term of 12 years. That's for one count of murder in the most standard of cases. So you can imagine that for a 22 uh, murder conviction, it's going to be well over the minimum of, of 12 years. It's going to be into several decades as a minimum term. Yeah, so several decades on the way. And it looks at the moment as if this man will not be there to see it happen. Do you think that's right? I think it's up to him.
I mean, if someone chooses not to go to their own sentence hearing, then that's up to them, isn't it? And they're well, you still could, you, could, you could drag them there, couldn't you? You could, but we don't, you know, that's not the way that we run our country in terms of using physical coercion on people. We detain people by force. We arrest people by force. But ultimately, the process of law is going to take place whether he's there or not. And he's going to get the sentence whether he's there or not. And the only thing that's likely to happen as a result of him absenting himself uh, by choice is that the judge is going to be even less disposed towards him and even less positively disposed in his direction than he would have been if he was sitting in front of him. Do you not so, think it's quite uh, symbolic, it, it, it though, to have the person... It's not quite symbolic to, uh, and almost correct to have the person face the courtroom, face the judge, oh. face the jury, face the victim's families? Well, the jury may, may not be there. I don't know if the jury okay, will be there. Okay, the let's court. assume the jury aren't, but the victim's families yeah, uh, certainly the, will the, be. The judge the victim's well, you know, the defendant could, could lie on the floor. I mean, you, you, the point is that... The, the judicial process is there to pass sentence. It's not, not he there. can't lie on the floor if he's handcuffed to a wall, can he? Which would be oh, one okay. way of addressing Do we really want to go down that yes, route? Yes, we do. Route? We absolutely do, Chris. We well, want why? to see why someone you? who's... Why do because what, somebody, what, what who's murdered, somebody who's murdered 22 people, I think the youngest victim was something like eight years old, in this barbaric, yes. murderous attack in Manchester, needs to face the music and all that goes with it. And that means the victims being able to look him in the eye ha as he is sentenced. And if that means dragging him, kicking and screaming into a courtroom, surely that's progressive and reasonable. It's not, Ian. Come off it. The point, the, if, if, if Why we is behave, it? If we behave in the way that criminals behave, by throwing people around, chaining them to walls, treating them with physical violence in to, order to... You don't have to throw them around. Is this what they teach in the lily-livered law school? Is this what happens no, to us? As a society... What we do is we lead by example, and we don't lead by using the same standards of behaviour that criminals use. Physical violence and force, minimum necessary for arrests, the well, minimum necessary for... Taking somebody into a courtroom. from their cells, come on Ian. Taking somebody into a courtroom, I wouldn't suggest is a violent act. It is if they don't want to go. Well, if they don't want to go, it's it's not a buffet of choice, is it, for the murderer? The, 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 the legal system exacts its price by the words that come out of the judge's mouth and the sentence order that the judge passes. We're, we're not putting people in the stocks and throwing things no, at them. No, I'm is just simply saying they should attend, they should attend their sentencing. And I think that would be, I think well, that, that, that's appropriate. Would you not sentence them if they run away? Well, and if, they're, if they're not there, and you they're clearly can't they're do under... anything. No, I mean, I'm not no, David exactly. Blaine. I'm not suggesting you can re make them reappear. But what you can do, surely, is do the right thing. And that's for the person to face the full music. And that means being present when sentenced. I don't well, think that's well, controversial, saying, Chris. It, all you would create is yet more martyrdom, yet more sympathy from the more extreme elements. They would all have the victim mentality. It's not televised, it's is it? So no one's going to see it. It more young teenage, teenage men with wayward ideology to think, yeah, the British state treats us like this, so let's go and commit some crime against the British state. When we show them civilization, when we show them how civilised states and people behave, which is with restraint and calmness, but we impose the correct sentence by due process of law, that's when we lead by example, and that's what we need to do. Chris, always good to talk. Thank you, Chris Dorr, QC, criminal barrister, author of Justice on Trial. He couldn't be more wrong on the last point. Come on. I mean, getting somebody to face the music, being there in the room. We have a very civilised system. Uh, the, the the nature, the, the process of law that we have in this country, all that goes with it, the prosecution, the defence, the fine arguments, the jury system. Um, we should be incredibly proud of that. I don't think it's controversial or leaning towards criminal behaviour ourselves if we uh, believe the person responsible for 22 murders, many of them children, should be taken into a courtroom to be there, present in front of the families while he's sent down for many decades. I would suggest that that is right and proper and appropriate. It's not about a show trial. It's not about revenge. You haven't got to kick the living daylights out of him. He's got to make sure he stands there while a judge looks him in the eyes and tells him what a piece of work he is and why he's going to jail pretty much for the rest of his life.